The equipment in the wood harvesting industry has changed over the years. First came the days of the crosscut and long saw. Horses were used to get the trees out of the woods. Then came chainsaws and cable skaters, like this John Deere 440. A set of steel cables was attached to the cut logs and to the back of the skitter, which would then drag the trees out of the forest. Today, we see equipment such as feller munchers and processors to cut down trees. The skitters have also been replaced by forwarders. Today we are here on Jim Karen's woodlot outside of Fort Kent for a demonstration by the Milton Cat Company of their newest equipment in forest harvesting. We will see the latest wood processor as well as their state-of-the-art forwarder. Now here at Jim Karen's we have somebody else from the Caterpillar Company and your name is? Yes, my name is Peter Collins. I work for Milton Cat and uh, we're the Caterpillar dealer for New England and New York State and I'm the forestry manager. Now what does a forestry manager do? Um, basically um, I'm in charge of uh, ordering the machines and uh, making sure that we sell them. Um, we also provide the product support and the parts and all that for the, uh, for the forestry machines. But here today, we have two machines, and both are the same company? No, uh, actually we, we have uh, two machines. The one that's behind me, uh, the yellow machine, uh, is a, that's a Caterpillar 521B. It's called a harvester, uh, used with a, a processing head. That machine is made in LaGrange, Georgia in the Caterpillar factory. Um, and then the attachment that's on the end of it, the, the orange harvesting head is a Cell Star harvesting head, um, which we, uh, we purchase with uh, the Cell Star people from Canada. And uh, they're here with us today to help us demonstrate the machine. So we uh, buy the machine from CAT and we add the attachment and we did the work in our brewer shop. So really the, the machine, when they, when they buy the, the Caterpillar from you, they, they're buying just a machine. Then they, they can order whatever head that they want on the end. Yeah, normally we stock a certain brand of head that we find is compatible with what we're, we're doing. And so in this situation, we've, we've kind of formed a partnership with Self Star and then we work with those guys. But we do sell other brands of heads as well, yes. Now this is, the, this is a, a processor. This, this is a, what we would call a tracked processor, yes. A tracked processor. Now the next machine, what, what do we have here? So th this machine uh, here is a, is a forwarder. Uh, the machine is uh, made by a company uh, called Logset. And Logset is from Finland. Um, we just uh, signed a dealer agreement with, with Logset within the last six months. And uh, we, we did have a forwarder line through Caterpillar. Uh, 
but r rather than them updating it, um, they, they encourage us to go find another partner. Uh, Log Set also makes rubber tied harvesters in uh, a lot of different size forwarders, smaller and larger for different applications in the woods. So that's a Finnish based company. Um, this is actually the first machine that we've received. Um, and I believe that we sold it to a contractor that works uh, uh, in the North Woods, uh, Edmund Roy. Uh, works on Seven Islands Land Company. Now what what exactly does a forwarder do? Well a forwarder would uh, pick up the processed pieces of wood so the, the harvester with this orange head would cut the tree and cut it into uh, a specified length depending on what the requirements were at the mill and then in the next phase of the operation the forwarder would come along and, and pick up those trees uh, those logs and uh, pick them up off the ground and bring them uh, out to the landing and, and probably would sort them to different lengths or different species on the landing and then uh, that product would be ready for trucking so it basically just takes the trees out of the woods after they've been cut yes yeah, yeah, and stacks them. Yep. Now this it looks like it just there's a crane on it that takes the trees from off the ground and loads it onto the back of it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Similar to loading a, a log truck or anything else, we would have a, a log loader, and that's what that machine has. And as I said, these people make smaller forwarders for what we would call thinning work, and they also make larger forwarders for for uh, maybe a larger operation. But the concept is pretty much the same, same on all thing. forwarders. Yep. Now, on this, this is a this is a larger a larger model. This would be a larger model. This is this is likely the size that most people would buy. It would be a what we call a 15-ton forwarder, and that's based on the amount of of weight that it actually hand, handles. So, you know, we have competitors that sell 15-ton forwarders, and this is our our solution to that. So, yeah. So, 15 tons, if we I'm sure it probably depends on the species of the tree. Right. What does it translate into cords? Uh, 15 tons would be uh, six, seven cords, something like that. Yeah. So it, it goes in and picks up seven cords of wood and brings it out to the road. Right. And then the operator then breaks it up into species and lengths. Yeah, the, 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 the product would be cut to the length in the woods, but when he brings it out, he, he will bring it out and, and when it gets to the, to the landing, he would separate it to, uh, into different piles to make the next phase, which is the trucking, that much easier. So I'm assuming we're going to see this in operation later on today? Yes, I, I think so. I yeah. hope yes. so. <laughs> yeah. Certainly, the technology in the woods has changed over time. Yes. Um, I know behind us we have a couple of skidders, and uh, I don't know if they're grapples or not, but. Uh, then we have a cable skidder yeah, and a bulldozer. <laughs> you know, and, and, and to think that once these were the standard in the woods, and they're not that long ago. That's correct. And now we have this kind of technology. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, the one thing that's noticeable with all of this equipment that we've seen, that we're seeing now, is the safety feature. Yes, I mean, it's, it's uh, to have a man inside of a cab, climate controlled, and uh, in a lot of cases with, uh, you know, uh, uh, XM radio, um, I mean, it's, uh, it's certainly a different world, although it's still a difficult, you know, uh, the guys have to be in the woods early and work long hours, so it's still a difficult uh, profession, so, but uh, at least they do have, they're warm most of the time or cool most of the time, so. And safe. And no bugs. And no bugs. Yeah. <laughs> Most important. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Could I have your name, please? My name is Ethan Parker. Yeah, what, what does this machine do? This machine is a log processor harvester. So essentially, you can cut the tree off the stump depending on the diameter size. The first thing it does is it knows the diameter. And then after that, you'll have a cutting list as per the mill specs. 
So it's a matter then, the head through the measuring wheel can measure length. So you essentially cut your tree down, press your preset for a 16 foot log, whatever log you're looking for. The head will calculate based off the diameter and the length, what logs to take. It'll stop, you can auto cut, manual cut it, whatever you would like. They're fully automated uh, bucking systems. So it's your, I mean, you determine what you're looking for in a log. It doesn't determine as it goes through to calculate how much wood am I going to get out of this log. It can. It can. It's gone that far where it can tell based off the diameter stem profile how many logs the computer thinks will be in that tree itself. Really? Essentially, if it's set up a certain way, an operator can press one button and the machine will do everything itself. You never have to touch it. So you can actually, so there's a, compu a computer on the inside. There is, there's a computer on the inside that relays information from the head, the length, the diameters, back to the computer calculations. It's all fully automated. Does it, do you have to program the species of the tree as you're cutting? You do have to program the species. Usually you'll do that before you start your uh, logging contract or your logging block. It's a matter if you're in a mixed stand of trees, you can switch species by pressing one button or another. The tree, the, then the head will know what cutting list it's working off. If it's maple, you might have a variance of 12 foot 6, 14 6, 16 6. All can be diameter based too, so per species the head will calculate uh, the amount of logs it needs to take. So it doesn't cut the log exactly to 16 foot, let's say you're cutting 16 feet. You have to allow some kind of buffer? You uh, allow a one inch window. A one inch so window. You go for your target length would be uh, 16 foot. So you'd put it in the computer from 16 foot to 16 foot one. And 98% of the time you'll be within the one inch window. Now where's the... I mean, this it measures. Now, where's the cutting blade at? So we run a heavy-duty three-quarter saw. So that's actually the cutting blade itself. That is the cutting blade itself. It's essentially a, a big chainsaw. And so you 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 bring it up to a tree. You just bring it up to the tree. What, what happens first when you drive up to it? You'll drive up to the tree, operator position himself. He'll grab onto the tree with the er, delim arms and the drive wheels. Then he will press his saw button. The saw will come out, cut the tree off at the butt. The head will then tilt down and he can start processing logs. The logs. Does, is there, um a minimum size to the tree there or and a maximum size for that matter the maximum capacity on our heads you'll be able to process about a 30 inch tree a 30 inch tree so from 30 inches down to about a two and a half inch tree really yeah so the arms will actually just hold the tree the arms will hold the tree yeah and how fast does it cut the tree how, how many i'm assuming it's measured in seconds, that it actually cuts the tree? Our uh, heads will feed approximately 18 to 20 feet per second. So you're not uh, not a long time cutting trees. <laughs> I guess not. No. Nope. It cuts a lot. So then the tree's cut, it's put on the side, and then does it remove the branches as well? It will. You'll have sharp cutting edges on the top of your delim knives as it runs, as the feed rollers pull the tree through the head, the delimbing arms will actually cut all the branches off the head. It just, it just, it just cuts them right off, it, it, it breaks them off. Yeah, it'll cut them off just like a knife does. Now what about, what about the top itself when it gets to the top? Does it know when to stop measuring or? 
Yep, once you get to a minimum diameter for the mill spec, the computer will alert you with a sound or a visual on the screen. You'll know to that's basically the end of the tree. There's no more logs to be processed out of it. So it's actually, as it measures the tree going up the trunk, it gets to a certain diameter and it says, okay, the mill only wants six inches or four inches. Yep. And then it stops there. Yep, exactly. You can manually override it also, but the computer system itself will stop there and alert you that it can't make any more logs. And it is that the, the, there's a top blade to it. Is that the top blade that's, that cuts it off? There is also a topping one. So what happens if you get to a top where maybe it's broke off, say, that you can't feed to the butt, so you can switch to your topping saw. It'll automatically make the calculation, go to your topping saw, and you can run uh, just the topping saw. And then all of this is recorded on the computer? It's all recorded in the computer. You're able to print your production out at the end of the day and within about a 10% accuracy, know exactly how much wood you have on the ground. Now, what happens after the, uh, that it just piles it off to the side or drops off the tree after it's been cut and trimmed off and logged? Yeah, exactly. It'll, the operator itself will control the machine to make piles forever for the forwarder to come in or whether it be a truck roadside however they're logging. Now does the, does the machine that comes in, the forder in this case, that comes in to pick up the wood after, how does it find the tree or do you, it, it just follows you around all day long? Uh, the forder will follow the trails the harvester has gone in and he'll just grab logs off the side of the trail as he goes. Does the machine, does the computer also record the, I mean it's recording the logs, the size, the different lengths, does it, does it mark the location of it? And I'm thinking of winter time when it's covered with snow. Uh, it is a possibility with specific uh, programming in there. You can uh, actually, it'll show on a map where there's logs placed. So, so now you've been running a, a machine like this or this machine for how many, for how long? I worked for the Irvings in East Coast, New Brunswick for uh, four years running one of the machines. Then uh, I moved to British Columbia, Canada, the hub of forestry. I ran one out there for a few years also. That's uh, my extent, so I have about six years running Six one years in? Now, I'm assuming if it's in New Brunswick that a lot of the trees are probably spruce and fir. Uh, we did a lot of hardwood. You did hardwoods? Yes. The majority was all uh, big hardwood, so. Now on hardwoods, when it gets into a fair size tree, whether it's a maple or a popple or, or whatever you get, are the branches hard to break off? They're a lot harder than a softwood tree. They're <laughs> a lot harder than a softwood. Yeah, the operator can manually override the feed rollers so you can reverse and take a few runs at the branch if you have to. And usually within three or four times, you're able to bust through it to keep going. Is there, is there one tree species that's tougher? Yes, yellow birch is probably the hardest. So once you get to the top, you don't know where that's going to go. So Really? Now, when you were out in, in, in British Columbia, are the trees differently? Are they, are they different? Different species? Uh, the similar species, the thing with British Columbia is the uh, trees grow so tall there. Most of the trees, you know, are 90, 100 feet long. So we don't, we don't see that around here. No. It's where we get the big volume out there compared to here. Uh, and what species do they have? They're the primary species out in, in BC. Primary spruce and Douglas fir, balsam fir. It's, uh, that would be probably the biggest of them. Well, thank you. I mean, this has been good. Is it possible to see the computer on the inside? You bet. Now, which company makes this machine? This is a Caterpillar 521B harvester. So. And um, as far as other models, because I'm assuming they make a whole bunch of other models of this machine. 
Yeah. Um, what direction has the company been going as far as making or improvements, I guess, that they make on these machines over the years? So they've come a long ways in operator comforts in these oh, machines. Operator comfort is that important. Be, <laughs> it's one of the most important things these days. It's, uh, as far as all the hydraulic systems, fuel systems, everything's more efficient. Everything's cost effective to run. Did they run about the same size of the, the, the harvesters themselves? On average, uh, all the other competition, John Deere, Tire Cat, they'll all have a harvester about the same size to compete with it. Now, how does it work on hills? And I'm, I'm kind of curious as far as, you know, if it, when you're operating on flatland, I'm assuming that it's fairly easy. Well, I don't know if it's easy or not, but what do you, when you got that on a, is there a, a steep, a hill that's just too steep to climb with these things? Essentially, there are hills too steep, but there are guys out there that'll test the limits. I'm not one of them, but there's plenty of guys. I'm sure there will be some here today that would. <laughs> that'll push it to, yeah. push it. Does it, does it always say, or does it, does it tilt in any, any, to accommodate for the terrain? This model doesn't tilt. Caterpillar makes one uh, model above this that's a full tilter cab. So it's fully leveling. You would never really notice that you're uh, on a side hill. So on the inside, what do we have? On the inside, we have. I mean, I can certainly see a nice comfy seat. <laughs> it looks pretty impressive. It's a comfy seat. It's even heated, so. It's yeah, heated seat. Yeah. So basically, you have your joysticks to control your machine function, your head, and your uh, boom and stick. Your pedals to control your tracks forward and reverse. You have a display screen for your uh, engine RPM, hydraulic uh, temperature basically any information for the carrier itself. In the top corner you have the bucking system for the processor harvester head. So that's what monitors the actual the, the head of the machine, the cutting head? This will sh is basically your display. It'll show your lengths, your diameters, tree species, um, all the functions you need to run it. I'm assuming this is all air conditioned too. Yes, it's fully air conditioned. There's even a <laughs> fan. <laughs> yeah, I saw the fan. So it's it's all operated by joysticks completely. And, yep. and a few buttons. The whole machine's operated by joysticks and on the joystick itself there's about twenty buttons for each one. Well, this is very good, very interesting. I mean, certainly logging has changed from... It's came a long ways, that's for sure. Yeah, what we've seen in this area, you know, the days of the chainsaws are certainly more than a thing of the past. I wouldn't say they've gone completely obsolete. There's still areas where you need a chainsaw, but for the most part, this is safer. You have guys off of the ground into a cab that's fully guarded there's no uh, risk or danger yeah I can see all kinds of screens in the windows uh, and I see the, the the roof has some awful looks like big metal I guess just to protect the operator yeah exactly so safety is a big is a big factor here it is uh, safety is the biggest factor in uh, forestry nowadays well great Thank you. Once the trees have been cut, with this processor, they're then piled along the woods trail for the forder to come in to pick up. This is a wood trail, and as you can see, the logs have been piled alongside.
waiting for the forder to come along to pick it up and bring it out to the yard. The operator takes very good care of the land. As you can see, the branches that were trimmed off the trees are left and make a bed for the machine to go down to pick up the logs or to keep on going cutting. The terrain is left intact. The branches will rot and make more nutrients for other trees to grow. The logs, once cut, are just piled alongside the road or the trail that the harvester has gone through. The logs are in different lengths and piled in different places according to their length and species to be later picked up. The markings on the bark of the tree show that it's been cut by a processor. The little wheels that we saw earlier that pull the log right through the trimming head leave the marks on the trees.
And this is the forder that's going out to pick up the wood that was cut along this skitter trail. And now the forder is coming in and collecting the wood where the processor has cut and just piled them along the edge of the woods. The operator does both sides of the trail as he steps out. The operator is actually facing the rear of the machine. Piling each log carefully onto the train. These are spruce saw logs. They will be used to make lumber. The operator in this case is collecting all the woods of a certain length. He's leaving the smaller ones or the shorter pieces to be picked up later. Once at the main road, the logs are going to be piled to make it easier for the trucks to come in and haul them off to the mills. So now they brought the wood to an area that will make it easier for loading onto the trucks. Taking the trees off 
and just piling them alongside the road. Since they were all collected with the same length and the same species, they're just making one good pile right alongside the road. He'll go back to pick up the other length trees and we'll start a second pile. This is a very nice load of wood. So this is how lumbering has changed over the years. From buck saws to chainsaws, skidders to fellow bunchers and processors. That technology has changed, but it still depends on skilled people to operate this equipment. A special thank you to Jim Kieran for hosting us on his land, as well as to Don Labrie for showing us the equipment owned by the Milton Caterpillar Company. <laughs>